Hello everyone, welcome to Connected, your bilingual space. We're gonna use this time to connect with some friends from all over the world. My name is Fabiana and I'm gonna be your guest on this journey. Don't forget that you can also follow us through our YouTube channel, Facebook and Twitter. topic is related with a habit that whether we like it or not every day we deal with and this is fashion why do i say this it is because whether you like to get dressed to go to work or whether you like to go natural there is still the need of dressing up so when it comes the time for you to buy something you're always going to find something that shows a little about your personality correct Nowadays, fashion, it's related to mm, expensive items, but that's not the case. Not always we can find only think that fashion is the most expensive item. That's not what it is. So what I want to make it clear today is that when, for instance, you buy whatever kind of item, there's always going to be a label and there's always a brand and this this label is going to tell you where this piece was made of. So that's the important thing. That's what I want to rescue today. When you are going to, when you buy something and you say, for instance, made in Afghanistan or made in China, that's the one we usually see the most. Do you know what that means exactly? Okay, we see, okay, made in China. What does that mean? That means that somebody all the way in China worked on that piece right whether it is a, a clothing or shoe or a purse today we are going to connect with a friend that took the time to do the homework he decided to find out and do the research and see what happens to the product before that one is sold so when he faced some uh, very difficult truth to believe he decided to step into a new world what is it that he really found out? Well, in some of the cases, the big brands, um, they had, he found out that some of the big brands uh, behind the industry, there are some, uh, some workers that are not well paid. Also, he found out that some of the, the items use too many uh, animal products in order to create them. And also he find out that these fabrics or this industry, they don't, they don't really take a lot of care about how um, the results or how about the end of the, the production that happens on this industry, how are they, um, how they are solved into the, into the space. How do they clean their waters? How do they clean their paint they use with it? And most of, most of the information he put together pointed to a very environmental impact in a negative way. So when we come back after the cut, I'm going to present you to Marcos Aliaga, which is a friend and a very uh, activist that decided to walk into the alternative fashion world. Stay connected, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with our interview. Welcome back and as promised, I am already connected with my friend Marcos Aliaga who is all the way in Montreal, Canada. I'm gonna give you a little bit about his background before we enter the interview. Marcos Aliaga was born in San Francisco but from Bolivian parents. He uh, studied all of his high school time in La Paz, Bolivia and then for college he went back to LA where his passion for fashion started. He has work experience in big brands companies such as Macy Union Square in San Francisco, also Nordstrom, 
the Porsche design and Luxottica. All of these are very big companies that work with the, within the fashion uh, mainstream world. After having all of the experience on this side of the, the industry, um, Marcos decided to work by himself and for himself. That is when he decided to found uh, the Altruist store. This store is um, dedicated to a group of uh, different designers that care about the environment, care about animals, and care about workers. So today we have the pleasure to talk to Marcos about this. So here we are with our special guest of today, my friend Marcos Aliaga. He is all the way in Canada and Montreal. Marcos, thank you so much for being with us today. And as a first question, I want to ask you, how was your first contact with the alternative fashion world? Did you, pur did you purchase something yourself or you, get, you got something as a gift? How did you get in contact with? Well, Mariana, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, for my first contact with alternative fashion or sustainable fashion was really with uh, Tom's Shoes actually. Uh, and this was early 2011 and Tom's Shoes has been such an inspiration and I love what they were doing of you buy a pair of shoes and you get one, uh, you give one free. Um, they give to somebody in poverty in different countries. So I love the concept of what they were doing. And that was kind of my first interaction with sustainable and ethical fashion. And once I learned that, I knew I kind of wanted to start changing everything in my wardrobe. But it was hard right. to find. Right. And as we learn about your experience coming from the conventional fashion world, what would be the main difference that you see with now the alternative fashion world as far as ethics and professionalism? What would you say? I would say now, for the in the beginning, sustainable fashion was in a group that was looked upon by a lot of people that it was boring or it wasn't you know, as fun and a lot of people didn't take it seriously. And I find now it's, uh, especially the, the younger generation is really um, focused on building a better future, sustainability, animal rights. So I find now all the brands that are coming out that are really focused on sustainable uh, fashion and ethics is uh, they're trying to go at par with the normal mainstream brands that you see in the market now. So you right. see a lot of people starting very strong uh, with a business sense of it. Before it was more just an ideal. Now you can see there's a business part of it that is to compete with a lot of the big brands. Right, and when you talk about sustainability, um, I want you to kind of like um, make some points. Like there are three uh, kind of like basics about this. And I would say one, it's the fairly paid people, right? The crafters. Number two, it would be uh, animal abuse when it comes to use uh, feathers and leather. And number three will be probably the impact that the big industry has uh, against the world, correct? Can you tell us a little correct. bit about those three things? Correct, so the first thing is uh, sustainability and fair trade. So it also, it's very important to, whenever we buy something is what are the materials made from, um, where, how are they making, let's say the fabrics or the finishes, uh, how many chemicals it has. So that really revolves on the damage that it's going to uh, do to the planet. And then who are making these items and are they being paid fairly? And a lot of the big companies go to uh, underdeveloped countries to, to have these made because it's cheap labor. However, you know, you might be paying $5 for a shirt, but the person making it is maybe getting 25 cents or 30 cents for making that shirt. So there is a lot of for That's one ridiculous. piece. Um, so there is, you know, a lot of, unfortunately, some type of slavery when it comes to the fashion world. There's a lot of accidents that happen because companies don't have uh, secure and uh, healthy environments for their employees. Uh, because of all the chemicals that they use, there's a lot of hazards. So 
the, okay. really having uh, like a good environment for the employees, good pay, uh, not working uh, overtime, forced overtime, which a lot of companies do that. Somebody will work for 16 hours a day, not paid overtime, um, no breaks. Some people, sometimes you see, they even have to bring their kids to work. So it is a really sad story. So a lot of the new companies that are focused on sustainability and fair trade, one of the main right. things is all about the people that are making the product. So usually what you see in sustainable fashion, the prices are a little bit higher, but you have to understand that people are getting paid a decent wage that's above at least if it's not minimum wage, it's above minimum wage, but they're not being paid under uh, or working like slave slave work. Um, and then right. you go into animal rights. So there is a cruelty factor uh, that when you look into the fur industry, the leather industry, the beauty industry, which has a lot of animal testing for cosmetics. So all of that is a big factor, but it also goes back around into sustainability when it's um, uh, for the environment. So a lot of people have said before, and the argument is that leather is a byproduct of the meat industry, but in fact, it's not. It's an actual industry on its own. And leather tends to be the, the most expensive part of the single most expensive part of the cow that is bought, is sold. So to have all the animals is it takes a lot of land so that goes into the environment as well besides the cruelty right. factor of it right so once you learn all of this like the other side behind right behind of the of a label that's what were you what we get on stores mm -hmm. so since the day you decided how long ago was this and how was the experience so far from changing from the mainstream to this alternative fashion uh, scene well it's a challenge <laughs> it's a challenge definitely <laughs> trying to change all your you, all your fashion i had bought the domain right. in Altrist, um back in 2011, really kind of when I knew that this is something I wanted to do. Um, but I didn't start working on it until 2014, late 2014. Um, and that's when I really started doing a lot of uh, investigation, research, because there's so much to learn before you can get into it, because you have to learn about the environment, you have to learn about Right. Uh, people's rights and all of those things so it takes a long time and then to learn about brands find brands that uh, you would that I would want to sell was also a big challenge because most of them were not here in, in America most of them are from Europe and I still deal a lot with them uh, mostly all my brands actually come from Italy Poland um, Germany um, so it, it was right, hard so you to probably find You probably oh, had God. to also like kind of like build a community, right? Like in America, in order like to bring sure. um, to bring uh, these people that cares the same about the same things that you do and bring them together and put them in a, one place. Correct. And, you know, a big challenge was because what we focus on is more on the luxury side of it. The big challenge was to find brands that fell into the ethical part, but that also fulfilled the luxury part. So for luxury, you, you're seeking for really high quality, high craftsmanship. So it was a challenge to even find uh, and get in touch with the right customers because there, there's definitely people out there seeking for that. But because it's such a, a niche, it's it takes time to build reputation. We do a lot of pop-up shops, uh, pop-up events. We, to get out into the community, we did events in Toronto and all over Canada. So it's to get to meet everybody one-on-one. -on -one. So you've been with your store for the past three years, basically? Yeah, we're going into our third year. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the items. Um, I, th I believe you guys have, um, it's an online store, correct? Correct, we're only online. Uh, every now and then, like I said, we do some pop-up shops, but those are temporary, but it, uh -huh. it's mostly online. And right. some and of the so products- Right, you have how many, sorry, how many uh, designers you have on your store right now? Right now we have about uh, between 
10, 12, we are uh, going to be adding some more. Actually, uh, we're adding a brand this weekend. We're going to be oh. adding two more brands next month. Um, so it's it's right. always growing. Uh, we're actually launching uh, luxury faux furs. Uh, so we're working with one of the best faux fur designers in the world, and we're going to be the exclusive launch for her. This is the beautiful part of the business, I believe, like to actually find people and meet them and know the, how they are coming up with new materials, something that is more friendly with just, with just the world and everything that we believe in. So tell me, what would be the, your best seller? What's, your, what's the product that it comes out easy? Uh, I would say it's our Alexandra K handbags. So the handbags uh -huh. that we carry from Alexandra K, they're all handmade in Poland. Um, uh -huh. We started, she started her business 2014. So we started working with her just a year after and we've been growing together. We're actually really good partners. Um, and with her, we're developing a lot of uh, new things together. And what's the material she uses? Just like really fast because I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, so right now we use uh, polyurethane. We do use uh, pineapple uh, fibers also. It's a new fabric uh -huh. called Pinatex. It's made out of pineapples right. and we're launching next month um, a fabric out of uh, apple peels. So it's made uh, literally out of apples and it resembles leather. So we're launching wow. handbags made out of apples and actually another brand that we carry in Amanti is launching shoes made out of apple. So besides it being vegan, now it's becoming a lot more sustainable uh, where it's right. good for the environment as well. All of this sounds so futuristic, right? Back in the day, I don't know, 20 years ago, we would never think that we could actually have a purse or wear some shoes made, made out of pineapple or apples. It's just great and you news. Know, there Tell is uh, one thing, if I can add, um, this year is actually a really big year where technology is really merging with fashion. So we have The pineapple uh, leather came out last year. Um, Apple is really launching this year. There is even uh, people developing bio leather that is uh, leather grown in a lab. Um, there's wow. also uh, spider silk that is also being grown in a lab. So it has, they do not use any animals at all, but it's the, the quality is just like the real thing. Um, and there's a new one that they're launching leather made out of uh, grapes. They're calling it wine leather. So there's a lot of new fabrics that are coming out that, like you said before, we never would have seen in our generation. It's so great to see, to see and to hear all of these plans. For sure, I'm gonna, we're gonna have your website so people can follow you and see how are these products coming out to life. And to finish, I wanna thank you so much for this. It's really an eye-opening information because for as much as we can think that sometimes there is only one way to the things, not anymore. There's definitely more than one. Okay, so this is the end of our interview. Marcus, thank you so much. I'll give you space to talk to us. Thank you for having me again. And hi to Bolivia uh, from Canada. And it's great to be here. And come check us out at www.altruist.com. And we'll be hopefully seeing a lot more of each other. Thank you, Marcos. Stay connected. Don't go anywhere. So learning about this topic, there are some things or some aspect that I would like to leave the thought in your head. For instance, number one, it is very important to find out about the companies we consume from. We have a special tool, very powerful, that 20, 30, 40 years ago we didn't have, which is the internet. So if you like If you are a loyal consumer about certain label, or if you read a tag that says made in some place of the world that you have no idea about it, take the time, go there and find out. Try to find how is the industry or how is the label you are consuming, how are they treating their workers, also how do they use their materials and how do they disregard them. It's important to know that and you have the tool. Number two, very important, find out your value as a consumer. Remember that if we as consumers don't um, 
buy something from a company that makes the company disappear. So if, we, if you find that your favorite brand or not so favorite is having some sketchy habits and some sketchy way to do their things, that's, let's just not buy from them. Why would you give the money, your money to a, a company that is not uh, working well or working or not being loyal to us to the animals or to the environment. So it's important, take the moment to think, you are a value customer. Number three, connect what you like with what you think. For as much as you can like a purse or for as much as you can like a pair of shoes, if you don't like to see crocodiles die, if you don't like to see kids working to sew your pants, if you don't agree with that, then you cannot like what the final product is. So it's important in every aspect of your life. Connect what you like with what you think. And this is the thought I'm going to leave you for this week. I will see you again in seven days. Stay connected and have a great week. Goodbye.